Question seven, the other pinwheel question, or the carboxylic acid pinwheel. So a few of these hopefully are very direct and hopefully will stand out to you relatively quickly. Um, for the most part, carboxylic acid reactions don't really change depending on what's on the other side, meaning what R group is attached to the carboxylic acid. Um, letter A here is a bit of an exception, but the others are all common. So um, letter A depends on the fact that you're next to an aromatic ring. So this works because this is benzylic. Because of that, we can oxidize it using k 4 We can also do it with chromium trioxide. There are a couple of different ways to do that. That does not work for a straight chain. I can take a straight chain that ends in a methyl group and beat on it all I want with oxidizing agents and nothing's going to happen there. It's not going to go to a carboxylic acid. Okay, uh, letter B, carboxylic acid to simple ester. That's the Fischer esterification. That's going to be the alcohol, the alcohol is methanol in this case, and sulfuric acid generally, or strong acid. The other direction is just acid and water, or we could do it with base and water and then uh, make the pH acidic in the workup. But either way, it's relatively straightforward. Um, relatively mild conditions to do either of those. Sort of. Sulfuric acid isn't mild, but you're not using a lot of it. It's a catalyst in that reaction. Okay. Uh, letter D. Ester to the amide. This is just the amine. All we need is ammonia here. It's a direct displacement. The, the amine is nucleophilic enough to get the job done. Does not need special permission to do it. Same thing for the acid chloride to the amide, letter F, but we're going to need two of them. The reason for that is one of them is going to have to chew up the remnant, which is HCl. That chlorine takes one of the H's off the first one, so we're going to have to take that out. So one molecule of ammonia is going to get eaten up by acting as a base. We're going to have to have twice as much of it. That's more of an, more of an issue when you're using an expensive amine. It would be wasteful if you're not careful. But still, it's a requirement. You need two equivalents to make that work. Otherwise, you get very low yield. Um, acid chloride to the alcohol, just acid chloride to the ester, letter E, only requires the alcohol. Um, and generally, a mild base, something like pyridine, to take care of the rest of it. Again, chewing up the remnant HCl that forms because you're starting with an acid chloride. Going from the carboxylic acid to the acid chloride, Letter H here, um, easiest way to do that, thionyl chloride, or we can do it with oxaloyl chloride. Um, and there's a couple of other ways to do it, but those are the ones that your book will cover in this chapter. Um, going back the other way, again, is one that not necessarily you would want to do most of the time, but it's definitely a hazard when working with acid chlorides. All it takes to lose that acid chloride and end up back in the carboxylic acid is water. Even moisture in the air will do that. It's why if you make an acid chloride, you generally are better off dealing with it quickly because storage is, is potentially problematic. Um, until you learn how to store things moisture-free, it's better and you don't try. You just get, you know, make them when you need them, use them, and be done with it. Um, and in fact, that's generally how I would do it still, even though I know how to store things. I would still probably not do it if I don't have to.